Welcome, everybody, to the Star Citizen Podcast. And I am uh, excited to have you here tonight. Um, although, I will tell you, um, you definitely might want to check your... Check yourself before, you know, tonight because uh, we... It, it, it may get a little bit frosty, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Good to see everybody. Where you at? Maybe around the world. Good evening. Good afternoon. Wherever you may be. Uh, yeah, tonight is um, gonna be contentious at best. <laughs> Zell and I, I will tell you. Generally, we get together and. You know, I'll be on the ledge a little bit, and Zell will talk me down. Zell will be on the ledge a little bit. Uh, you know, um, you know, I'll talk him down. I mean, we we very much. If you've listened to other podcasts, know that we number one really likes the Star Citizen uh, universe, uh, and we absolutely enjoy the game. Um, but I will tell you, you know, obviously, I think you probably. If you've been listening, you probably have heard we've been, you know, kind of scratching our head at a couple of the delays and things, and and then um, then comes CitizenCon here, and and I, you know, it's so funny, you know, like uh, really kind of really listening to what they said, um, you know, and there was a lot of great, cool stuff in CitizenCon, but there's definitely a couple of things that were questionable as well. Actually, yeah. It was um, my first impression of Citizen Con was was positive. A lot of the stuff that you know we've seen, you know, that we saw on the videos, uh, we'll get into a little bit later. But um, most of the stuff, you know, I, I came off with a you know positive feeling about it. Um, some things in retrospect um after some clarification not so jazz about so. yeah i mean I, so, I yeah i mean yesterday when we spoke i was positive about the you know the things that we that uh we saw on uh, saturday um now, I have some concerns, and uh, we're going to kind of go through a little bit of that tonight. We are. And so, you know, and so that's what, yeah, I mean, I really just want to say, you know, if you go back and listen to the podcast, tonight certainly could be a bit of an outlier, you know, um, and it may ultimately be, end up being an outlier. It's hard to say. Um, what I will say is, uh, you know, before we get t terribly started... Is I will in all honesty with CitizenCon 2022, I am slightly less confident about where things are at with Star Citizen than I was before we went into it. Yeah, it. Um, yeah, you, know, you know to kind of. You know, go on what you're talking about. If you if, if you ever went back and listened to, um, you know, listen to us about things, we're fairly go, you know, very happy go lucky. <laughs> happy when warriors. it comes to a lot yeah. of this, and um, you know, we always try to put a positive spin on on things that may not be uh, too cool, but. Um, yeah, you know, I guess it's, it's put me in a weird place. Um, I don't like to be the negative Nancy <laughs> and say, oh, well, you know, this, this is going to fucking suck or whatever. And, but, um, yeah, I mean, there are some things that. You know, going back and reading a couple things on Spectrum and other things today, you know, it, it just kind of got rubbed the wrong way. And uh, certainly, some of the clarifications. I'm having a are... hard time. I'm, I'm having a hard time putting a positive spin. <laughs> well, certainly, some of the clarifications, you know, that you know have have 
have not done a great job at necessarily clarifying things, you know. So I guess, you know, one place we could start, though, tonight, Azel, and, and I will tell you, um, you know, of course, the, the you know, I, I'm going to be mostly positive about was uh, was the panel that was Planetary Pyro. You know, uh, the last, that, there's that last kind of five minute collage, like kind of um, sizzler collage of like, you know, of all the different, um, you know, all the biomes, all the different planets and just different kind of, you know, like I thought that was, I mean, I did think it was great. I did like, I did like looking at some of the planetary tech, how they can do kind of these raised areas and how they have fixed some of their transitions. Um, and I do, there's a, there's a feeling Star Citizen, you know, like when I just one of the reasons you're going to hear Zell and I be passionate about Star Citizen tonight is because it there it, it it's so capable of being so incredibly special. And in many ways it is incredibly special, but its potential is awe-inspiring. And there's a certain feeling like I have mentioned on this you know the podcast once or twice where you know, the first time I went hand mining, I walked out of the cave, and there's my one, thir- you know, my one hundred eye sitting there, and um, I look over the one hundred eye. I'm coming out of cave in Damar, and Crusaders like in the sky above it, and there was just this unbelievable feeling of I'll never see space travel in the future for real. This may be the closest thing I'll ever kind of experience in that capacity. Like it, like it was so amazing to me. And I will say, you know, on a positive note to at least get started tonight, some looking at some of the planetary pyro stuff, I got that feeling again. I, you know, that last, especially that last five minute reel, I got that. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Now, you know, there were some other things I wish they would have shown. Like, like I think I mentioned to you earlier, like Kira Cluster or maybe his Ruin Station or maybe some outposts would have been great. But I at least, you know, I will tell you, I did get that kind of feeling that I like that I get when like I fly around a, a star citizen planet and land and am just kind of in awe of its scale. Oh, absolutely. It, you know, um, I still have those you know, wow moments, different places. Uh, Star Citizen is a screenshot machine. I mean, you, you can just be doing anything and then kind of look over around where you're at and, uh, you know, you're like, wow, this looks amazing. Um, you know, with the density effects that we saw that they were showing off for the new planetary tech, uh, the foliage... The, that moss effect. Yep. Uh, the new plants. Um, the, sky, awesome. the sky box. Yeah. 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 Oh, like all yeah. that stuff was fantastic. Yeah, they looked. It looked great. It did. It was. It was awesome. Um. You know, I. I thought. You know, I'm with you. I thought we we're going to see a little bit more. Uh, than we did. I mean, what we saw was actually was pretty great i mean there was some if you know if i'm to be honest there were some um that were you know it's kind of like a lot of the same you know you might as well said it was damar or something i'd be like oh okay um but you know but then some other places look fantastic um yeah i mean I think it's, you know, it's going to look great. Uh, I, you know, we talked a little bit about this before. I, <laughs> I'm going to have to re- reevaluate my predictions on um, when we're going to see Pyro now. I, you know, from what we saw and uh, what we didn't see, maybe a little bit further out than... I was suspecting and I, I hate that because I've been pretty good <laughs> yeah being on the money with a lot of things you have I mean you've nailed a few things for sure along the path and uh, you know I guess we'll get into this a little bit too but you know with some other stuff uh, we're gonna talk about later yeah I'm just like uh, so yeah I thought 
what we saw was great. Um, you know, I think some, maybe one or two things looked a little samesy. Um, but uh, for the most part, I thought um, what we did see looked looked pretty awesome. We didn't we didn't get to see everything. We uh, and I looked around. Didn't you look around to see if uh, uh, we did see the one big mineable rock? We did. There's a there's a great big mineable with like green hues through it. Yeah, it had the green streaks in it. Kind of made me. Uh, you know, I scratched my. Scratch my chin and said, "Hmm, I wonder what color pyrite is." <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. it uh, yeah, exactly. It, you know, it, uh, that's what it was. But I, you know, I was looking for other things too. I was like, "Hey, man, is there any quantanium laying around here or whatever?" So, yeah, well, that's a great question. You know, you know, but but anyways, yeah, I did. I liked, uh, I liked um, what I seen. It wasn't. Uh, like I said, I, th there was a little bit more I was hoping for, you know what I mean. But I, I'm not, I, I'm not going to say anything negative about what I, th what was there looked great, um, you know. And and I definitely hope in the future to see Ruin Station, um, some of the outposts, and definitely the Jump Gate, you know, and some of these, you know, some other parts of it. The, nope. Akira, the Akira Cluster would be great. Honestly. Uh, I thought we'd see the jump gate this year. Uh, I, th I part of me was hoping, like when they said an in-engine look at Pyro, that they, they were going to start on the Stanton side and jump through the gate yeah, and come out. Yeah, and exactly. Uh, um, that was a little bit of a disappointment. I was wanting to see uh, the new, you know, the new effects that they had been talking about. You know, we saw an Inside Star Citizen. I guess it's been a couple months now, but. Because last um, year IAE, if you remember, with the Odyssey, and there was the whole um, what is that little show? What is that called with that with that actor and the, the you know the, and the quiet guy? What is the the little show that runs all through IAE? Jack something or oh another. Jacks Jacks McCleary Jacks McCleary right. right? And I mean you know there was the whole he jumped away through Pyro and you really just got the sense for whatever reason they seemed like they staged it last year like a lot more Pyro stuff you know. Was you know like he was going off and you know taking the Odyssey and going off to Pyro. Well, you know, um, we've been on this road to Pyro for two years now. <laughs> um, it's a long. I thought we were going to get a, a healthy road. It's a healthy road. It's a it's a bit of an autobahn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I thought uh, I thought we we're a little bit closer to the end of the road yeah. um, than. I'm I'm not as I'm not as positive about uh, seeing Pyro anytime soon as I was before. No, I I mean just you know you and I have kind of as as this year's worn on and we've talked about it a couple of times. You know, um, it seems like, and especially now with Eva Cady just getting into the system today. It's you know um, on, on October twelfth. You know, there's I think. Uh, it, you know, Eva Cotty kind of came into the verse uh, for with persistent entity streaming. Um, you know, I, I think that you, yours and my hope had slid from first quarter to maybe to second quarter or summer. I'm thinking the very earliest we're going to see Pyro next year, if we're lucky, is at IAE. Um, hey, that is the way it's looking is a distinct possibility yeah i mean i um, i was definitely a few weeks ago or a few months ago like ah we could see it earlier this year i was like oh we'll see it for sure like you know more you know sometime there'll be a big announcement at ie it'll be sometime you know earlier in the year like april or something you know of of next well, with year a lot, of, with a lot of information that we've you know that we've gathered over over the past year and you know listening to uh, you know a lot of their uh, a lot of their posts and they seem to be you know pretty damned and determined to get pyro out by the end of this year and um, and I know that they were really 
them pushing these timelines like they have been, you know. Well, and there from, were other things that 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 led into that too. You get refueling, right? And then all of a sudden, you see a re, you see like a a refining ship. You start seeing, you know, like it seemed like, but they pushed them back now. The you are going to have the Apollo and the triage. You know what I mean? Well, it seemed like they were beginning to put the ships in place that were going to support Pyro. Although there was, you know, the really, Vulcan I mean, is, they've even they've even come out and it was like, yeah, man, it's you know, we're going to see it soon. At, well, uh, you know, a lot of these inside star citizens and and star citizen lives and things they'd really been you know pyro's just riding around on the you know uh about mid part in the summer dude it was like pyro's just around the corner it's you know we're taking a look at rune station and look at all the pirate gear and uh they were really pushing the you know something one you know a couple of things have possibly happened uh you know unforeseen thing un, you know unforeseen circumstances uh something in the engine broke so you know that's they're like ah this is pretty shit and you know trying to recover from it or you know it's uh just game development yeah, you know, any type of development, just things come up or whatever. And well, yeah, and the one thing, heavens, it's so easy for Zell and I to sit in this these chairs, and be and and, and to be you know critical, you know. I mean, and, and 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 we are. It's so important to us that we try and be as clinical and as not as cynical as we possibly can. Uh, I will say the lines are blurred tonight. I think for both of us, just because, and, and we'll get into it a little bit more. But you know, like. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's really easy for us to sit back and say, oh, you know, hey, it's, you know, you guys are this or that or whatever. But some of this is their own making, you know, where they they definitely are, you know, kind of hyping. Like, like I even just going, like, circling back to that Jax McCleary thing. You know, it's just like you really got the sense, like, it's like, man, Pyro's just right around the corner. It's probably going to be, you know, it's probably going to be an IA next year, you know. But it was. It's definitely not going to be an IA this year, you know. No, no, it. Uh, <laughs> it <laughs> and you know, from a lot of stuff that you know I've gathered and read and you know listened to, um, you know, it was it was seeming like a real distinct possibility Q1, and uh, you know, I, I was thinking February, March uh, is when we we're going to see it. Um, but I was rather bullish because of the attitude that I've taken in the past several months, um, especially with the release of 317 and, you know, how foobar that went. Um, and they just kept pushing it. You know, we know it's fucked up. We're just going to keep pushing, keep pushing. And uh, especially with the way they're releasing 318, um, you know, we were, you know, we heard a while back that 318 was going to be in an extensive test cycle. It's going to have, you know, a lot of time and Evocati and they got a lot of issues to work out. Uh, and, you know, it's going to have an definitely an uh, extended testing phase. And we're a month month before release. And it's just now hit Evocati today. So this is going to be another thing. And, and, you know, it's a done deal. They've already said they're going to release it at IAE. I mean, so, unless uh, they're going back on that, which is, you know, to me, like... I you know I wish they wouldn't come out and paint themselves into these corners, right? Because if you were if they were to say you know what we just got we're hitting a snag with uh, with persistent entity streaming. Tell you what we're going to do a seventeen four. We're going to throw the corsair and we're going to throw uh, salvage tier zero in there, uh, and it's gonna we're going to try and get you good stable servers, uh, and then we're just going to punt. You know, it's till you know, persistent ending streaming is going to be more of a three nineteen, you know, or it's going to or three eighteen is coming a little later. We're going to do a three seventeen four. You know, I think that would be okay. I mean, I, you know, not, the messaging is the messaging, right? But he, here's what you don't want, and what you don't want is what happened in three seventeen. 
which is, you know, and, and, and like I was on, you know, I was doing PTU testing pretty heavily in 317 prior to Invictus. And the day before Invictus, I was like, this is not ready for prime time. They would, they're not going to release this tomorrow. And they did. And I was, I was really surprised. I mean, it was okay or whatever. I was surprised they did it. But it, yeah, of course, we all know how that went. I mean, there were all these exploits. They ended up having to do a wipe. They corrupted the database, <laughs> you know. Uh, and so, and it was really, you know, they didn't even get around the corner on 317.2 to almost July. It was late June. Oh, I know. And, you know, so they, they had basically theater, three iterations of this patch during this patch cycle, which, um, you know, goes to show you something. Uh, you know, really uh, trying to get a lot of it uh, worked out. And, you know, I know that they've probably done some internal testing as it relates to 318. Uh, but it also goes to show you that the release, you know, the reason this Evocati wasn't released, or the reason the 318 testing cycle wasn't released until today um because this is probably the most stable 318 testing patch that they've gotten so far enough for people to test yeah they've got they finally got it off their dev machines basically yeah i mean it it might have been in a hell of a state where they're like well shit we can't even release it to evocati right now um you know because it's just so messed up so them releasing it today you know of course you know we're not going to know um you know because a lot of these people are you know ha have the confidentiality agreements so they can't you know they can't really say some things will leak out but you're but yeah oh, it, it'll leak out yeah. and you but know, you're absolutely right they're, they're not it's not supposed to someone's gonna say yeah this is so screwed up <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, so yeah, you know, um, I was rather bullish because they were pushing these patches, you know, closer and closer to 4.0, but, uh, with the way 319, with the 318 is going to be so rushed, they're going to take, I'd say the rest of the year trying to sort 318 out uh and 319 probably isn't going to be until mid to late january before they even start talking about releasing a, a testing cycle for it it's so. going to be interesting for sure but we, we you know what started out is just a little is what what seemed like because three sixteen one once again was so stable, it was really stable for those months. Um, at least at least from a, I should preface that at least from a mining standpoint, at least like my gameplay loop, uh, you know, was incredibly stable. And three seventeen has not been really stable, and we've been on this kind of slide, and we're we continue to be on the slide. Um, where, you know, that's what we're talking about. There's this gap that's opened up where we used to think it was quarter, Pyro was quarter one, quarter two. I'm thinking our best, you know, our, my hope is that it's out by IAE next year. Um, you know, and so that being said, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of moving on on this panel, uh, there was this, the, the design brief investigations that Luke Presley and Elliot Maltby did where they talked about these... Um, um, different kind of archetypes and story-driven archetypes for, for um, you know, for the game, uh, you know, for questing and that type of thing. What were, what was your take? What was your main takeaways from that part of? Well, I like the idea. Absolutely. Of course. Yep. You know, more flavor to the missions. You know, I, I'm I'm in favor of it. Absolutely. Uh, I like the idea of the um you know kind of doing the detective work and uh i like the idea that uh 
these particular missions don't hold your hand. You got to kind of use some deductive reasoning to kind of figure out what had happened. And uh, the idea that, you know, you can use, uh, you know, some tech to kind of, you know, to get clues and things like, uh, you know, using the uh, med gun, you know, to see how the dude, you know, how the dude bought it or, um, you know, they even talked about, you know, kind of putting scanners in and trying to fit, you know, putting the scanners on your Moby glass and uh, things like that to kind of kind of find clues and some other things. And yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like, um, you know, having these different mission types adds, adds flavor. So, you know, I'm in favor, absolutely in favor of these things. Yeah, I am too. I mean, I'm in super favor of them. I think, you know, I mentioned, the, a, it seems like when you and I talked about it, like I could envision one where like you're an ambassador or something where you've got to go, you know, f go chat with the Xi'an and help them solve a problem to become, you know, befriend them or, so, you know, that type of thing. I mean, there's definitely a lot of cool things that could happen with those. I think that it's a, a necessary thing. Uh, to have those, you know, to have missions that, you know, that that have that are lore based, that don't have breadcrumbs, that require deductive reasoning, you know, um, for people to to kind of solve. Um, and and I mean, you could you could be very. There's a lot of open ends, you know, in in a good in a positive way, you know, for for a lot of those things with the repu with, the, with weaving that into the reputation system. Um, that type of thing. Anyways, you know, I, you know what Luke and Elliot were up to there. I absolutely um, appreciate because they are one. You know, one of the things that Star Citizen does lack is content, and they these. You know, I'm hard pressed to knock it because these guys are adding content to the verse. Well, yeah, I mean, one of the reasons we, you know, like Star Citizen is that it is. A big giant sandbox. Yes, you can go do anything you want to do. You can figure out your own, you know, fun games to play. Uh, but I, you know, I believe this is a good thing. I, I feel like, um, you know, they they need to constantly be adding these these missions into the game, uh, giving the game some flavor, giving you know, uh, giving you something to do, something to go, uh, you know, and have fun with. Um, and uh, things in this archetype, you, you can you can do, you know, like you were saying, a whole varied different mission scape uh, kind of based on this idea. Um, them adding new ideas, you know, uh, you know, for the future and just you know just keep adding the content that that's that that's really you know what you want out out of you know a big game like this is just keep adding that content and these guys seem to you know come up with some cool fun ideas so i'm interested to see what they uh have in the future yes absolutely well moving on to the new underground i know that we want to keep you know keep zipping along here um so my take on the first of all, I like the new underground stuff. I did like the, um, uh, I like the fact that they talked about new small, medium, and large size facilities for underground stuff. Um, I thought that particular panel was a lot was very heavy on concept art, very heavy on concepts, um, and very you know obviously there was some gray box stuff toward you know in, in the end. Uh, that 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 we've seen um but um definitely you know i i think all that stuff's great uh i think obviously you know the the, the design brief investigation stuff could absolutely you know <laughs> could could lead to any of these underground compounds um mm -hmm. and and having more ver more and varied underground compounds is great um i felt like this is a you know th this one it seems like it's a ways out you know, like in in that capacity, just because there was it was a lot more concept art than, say, in game engine stuff. Well, I think in one sense, they exceeded my expectations. We talked a little bit about it last week, mm -hmm. that you know we're going to get this you know expansion of, uh, you know, kind of the bunker, 
uh, scenarios, um, and you know, what, you know how how these huge underground facilities, you know, how they were going to play in. Um, you know what they've shown. You know if they follow up with, you know, the concept that you know the, the different concepts that we had seen. You know, it um, it's looked pretty pretty meaty. Uh, they they were pretty expansive as it relates to uh, you know size and scope. So um, you know with the general size of those things, and I know a lot of them. You know, once once they kind of build those tools in the bridge and things like that, that they could probably you know hammer them out pretty fast. But uh, um, I thought you know I thought yeah I thought they looked cool. Uh, yeah, having no. you know having it so big that you can drive vehicles. No uh, complaints yeah. here. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So and that there was there was like a cool like uh, the one thing I thought that was really cool is how they had that cargo lift that seemed to kind of <laughs> you know kind of come from the from the ground level down or whatever and that stuff i mean i you know all that stuff would be great and being able to land on one of those and have your ship kind of pulled down or whatever um yeah there's a, there's just a lot of good there, you know th i understand this they got a long ways to go but uh, the concept art that i did see i thought was great um and uh you, you know, there's a lot of imagined gameplay there and, and i'm okay i definitely am okay with, with, with where that's headed for sure absolutely you could see you could see like a mercenary mission where you're you know need to infiltrate the facility absolutely to, to download you know download some sort of packet or something and, yeah or like uh, like one of them they're showing like bearing or whatever maybe you're just gonna try and steal a gun design from them or something yeah exactly um yeah you know uh i think they're gonna be really cool so yeah i was uh i thought that was a pretty good one so lorville uh two let's just call it that because uh, is it redox? Is it redo? I don't know how to say that word. The redux. Yeah, the redo. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Did you redo or whatever? <laughs> no, Lorville 2. Um, I thought the concept art looked fantastic. I did like the fact that there was, uh, you know, they, they're they getting away from kind of the, uh, you know, taking control, you know, taking control of your ship. They're at least going to, they're at least, not, they're not going to take control of your ship <laughs> when you're flying around Lorville. They may, maybe when you go into combat. <laughs> But we'll, we'll get to that later. But, uh, you know, no, uh, you know, um, the one thing I will say is the same thing I said to Zell earlier. I was, I, is, and, I, and I don't do this very often, but I will mention content creator um, Ray's guide. Uh, Ray mentioned, you know, um, that he thought it was interesting that in the Lordville 2 that, you know, that the Hurstons would share Skyline with, you know, with, with some of the other corporations. And I think that's an interesting point. Uh, but I just, you know, you know, like, um, and from a lore standpoint, I'm not so lost in the lore that that bothers me that much in any way, shape, or form. But I thought it was a good point. But the one thing I was, I just liked what I seen. Like, you know, I, th I mean, it did look a little. I think you were use the word samey. It did look a little art corpy in a way, like like the Loreville version of art corp. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I also did, you know, I did appreciate its uh, the the scale of it, and I thought I, I you know, I. If if that was in there tomorrow, you wouldn't get a complaint out of me. You know, what I saw, it looked it looked great. I thought we were gonna hear a little bit more about um, outside the wall of Lorville and you know how you may be you know may be able to travel through the wall from the inside that type. You know, because if they were gonna go through the trouble of. Uh, you know, kind of doing this revitalization, this uh, Lorville 2.0, that they'd have those considerations in mind when they were building. And it's funny that, I, you know, we didn't hear anything about it. Um, I think that's one thing that I kind of missed out of that presentation is that, you know, because they, you know, they said they've, you know, kind of moved some of the train lines around and things i mean they're basically in the same direction they just kind of like you know fix some of the orientation on them and some other things and mm. it, it's just weird that we didn't hear anything about that uh you know because lorville's one of these landing zones that you're you know from what i understand you're supposed to be able to you know make your way to the outside of the wall and 
you know, outside the wall, you have, you know, all this, you know, like all this junk and garbage and it's like a big junkyard and and it's all these creatures that kind of live in that, in that trash. There's also, um, you know, different human settlements, you know, in, in those little zones as well. So, yeah, it's, I was uh, kind of disappointed I didn't hear anything about that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Moving on, we, we got uh, Power Play, which is the resource management stuff. Going into this, I think this is the one that you and I were looking forward to the most. Um, and I will say, it, you know, it didn't disappoint in the sense that I think long term that there's some great ideas there. Um, what they have in engine now was a bit Spartan. You know, I, I was thought, thought I was hoping that they were a little further along with that because obviously that's such an important piece of you know, multi crew gameplay. You know, I, I, I definitely will say, like I said, uh, I do wish they were a little further along with that resource management stuff. Well, yeah, they did show off a little bit about how areas of your ship can lose, um, you know, life support, power, uh, or you're shown where you can actually manipulate um you know ventilation and you know being able to purge you know like the system like if um and i know that you know you're gonna have like fire suppression and things like that but it was cool to see when they pulled all the oxygen out of that uh out of that room that you know it it uh also doused the fire as well so you know it, i think it's gonna be yeah, there's a lot of cool and fun ideas with it. I'm, I'm with you. I thought they were going to be a little bit further along. I mean, they've talked about this for a long time. I mean, we we went back um, for research on some of you know our other topics, and you know we went back a couple of years, and they were shoot, they were talking about it back then. Absolutely. So, I mean, and that's I, yeah. I thought, I mean, you know, I thought we were going to be seeing like a you know, close to final product and, you know, and that's, and, what, that's what I like, like to me, like I was surprised that there wasn't, I mean, with the components and like, it well, does seem like, I mean, it is not, it is not, um, not only is it nowhere near c completion. I mean, it's very fledgling. Um, I think this is the ongoing theme of this year's citizen con is um is us coming to the realization that things are not as far along as we'd hoped exactly yes yes that's that's exactly right we're um you know if if you know if you've been keeping up with this any length of time uh You're seeing that, uh, you know, a lot of the, especially when they add something like this, like, like I said, for the most part, it's pretty positive on the, on the negative is that we're starting to see things that we feel should be further along than they are. You know, we, we should have been, uh, especially in this power management situation, which is something they've talked about you know, for a long time, and um, you know, supposedly have been working on it. And I guess the realization that we're coming to is that is you know what what they've had for resources. It, it's it's you know they work on something and then they move a team to some something else, and and. Yeah, I don't know. Something dude, I, it's very peaceful. It, it, it seems, and I mean, and even Chris Roberts alluded to it, and 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 Richard Howler alluded to it in that two-hour conversation. It, things have been very piecemeal, you know, where they kind of get things to a certain state and then move on, and then there's so many of those little things to do. Then it's like you have a like a thousand little things all at fifteen percent instead of a hundred oh. things at seventy-five percent. You know. Uh generally in projects like this um it's that last 10 percent is the is the last 90 percent of the job fair enough uh you see that a lot 
it's when you when you think it's you know you it, it's pretty close to completion it's like oh well you've got it to uh 50 completion or 70 percent completion it's getting back in and you know finishing up that last 30 percent that that usually takes the longest so so yeah i mean i think you know to distill it all down with power play it's we liked what we've seen we thought that we were helped maybe you know i think we're hoping for a little bit more uh it is going to be a crucial part of homesteading it's going to be a crucial part of multi you know crew gameplay and um you know and it, and it will be nice to see it you know you know get around the corner on some, some more of the things that some of the more of the concepts they were talking about versus uh you know kind of where they're at so moving on talking ship now there was some there was some good stuff in talking ship uh I think uh, Zell, uh, you and I both really did like the spirit. Oh yeah, great ship. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. It uh, it was kind of one of those funny things, you know. If you guys had listened to, uh, you know, the podcast a couple of weeks ago about, <clears throat> you know, would you pay a hundred dollars for this? Thing? <laughs> we kind of chuckled a little bit, considering that's what the C one ended priced. up. Yeah, the war yeah, that's what they, yeah, that's what they priced it at, and we we're like, hmm, that's funny. But um, yeah, I think it's I think it's a great ship. It, it's it's awesome. It it definitely ticks that box that you know I was wanting. You know, I was definitely wanting another Crusader ship. Um, I think it looks cool. I think uh, it, it's got a lot of you know with the three different variants, it's got a lot of versatility. Um, so yeah, I, I think it was cool. Yes, getting on, you know, you know, any, you know, we'll do probably a little bit deeper dive on it, you know, later on. But yeah, well, know, and I like this. Listen, the 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 uh, the the Starliners, you know, kind of test bed version. Uh, I think that's great. I mean, just ha just you know, having more another another bomber. I mean, not to be slept on. You know that's a lot of that's a lot of bombing power. You know, oh, especially yeah. if you get if you get if you get a small group of those things together. Wow, they could really cause a, you know, some devastation, some absolute devastation. So, uh, anyways, yeah, I mean, we I aesthetically loved it. I liked that it's a crusader ship. Uh, I could absolutely, you know, like it's so funny. Like I found myself in the last couple of weeks in Star Citizen, really kind of wanting to go back to a ship that had a size two drive, like in the XL one drive. That was, you know, that wasn't, it didn't, it wasn't as big or like, cause my daily is, has been my Taurus for the longest time, but you know, I wanted to kind of get down to something back, back around the Cutlass size, you know what I mean? And so that seems like it's right in the wheelhouse. Uh, it's a, it's a Crusader ship. I, if that ship was in the game, I would probably be flying that as my daily. You know, it, it does. It's it's a Crusader ship. It doesn't seem like it has the the obligatory three Crusader doors to get to the cap. <laughs> You know, so, uh, well, and I and I very quickly have become a, a crusader uh, kind of fanboy. I will say, yeah, um, yeah, I, I've been there, uh, but yes, yeah, I, I think you know, mm -hmm. I think it's really cool. But let's get into it, man. Let's let, let's talk about we got well, a couple more things on the, ship. Though, the, yeah. the one, oh no, I know the one big exciting thing that we that. Uh, during the ship talk, man. Dun 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 new mining ship. <laughs> yes, how about that? Yeah, it's very positive on that. And for those of you that have voted, did you see what the vote was at today? I didn't. Um, I don't even, I, you know, I, it's like when I go to the RSI page, I don't see, I, I, let me see if maybe I look around for the vote. Um, if I can see where the vote is at. Let's see here. Mm, I don't see where the vote has gotten off to on, on the main page. <laughs> it says, it's, it, I blame myself, you know. I don't. I don't know where it's gotten off to. But uh, yeah, I'm looking looking around on the site now, and I don't. Let's see. This week in Star Citizen, the Grey Cat SUV or STV. 
out of character, behind the scenes. Oh, oh, pick a ship challenge. I found it. It's a little yeah, bit yeah. lower on the page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so where are we at? Yeah, Robert Space Industries kind of crushing. Now, um, you know, Musa Misk, who I wanted, is only at 23%. Uh, Robert Space Industries at 44 and then uh, then Argo's at 33 So it looks like... Looks like out of the 25,000 people who voted, um, most people, oh, near near half of them wanted a wanted a, a Robert Space Industries mining ship. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zell and I are, oh. We both yeah. wanted Misk for sure. Um, Argo would have been fine too. I, I I would say just you know, try, not, it's so funny. I mean, if we're just finding our way to the salt tonight, uh, RSI would have been my third choice <laughs> in this battle. Yeah, yeah. You know, first, it's so funny, dude. It, 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 <laughs> first thing that uh, you know, we were talking about it. You know, we we're like, oh man, really. Because uh, the first thing we thought of was a multi-crew mining ship that was very reminiscent of the Odyssey. That, that, I mean, that was what was in our minds. It was funny. We didn't even, you know, when we um, when we talked about it after the weekend, uh, that was the first thing we said. We were like, oh, it was like, no way, really? And you're like, yeah, you know. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, we already have, I mean, the conclusion that we came to is yes we already have a mole and yes we have a prospector um you know we have the orion that's coming one day uh you know it, it's the biggest mining ship i mean if we uh, if you we had to, if you had to make yeah, a random yeah. guess Zal, how many yeah. years out before we see the orion uh four sometime after release four are they have they, start, have they started yeah, even working years? on yeah, it? Yeah, probably. You know, um, <laughs> I'm just being you know, honest. Just the, trying to yeah, be once, nice. Yeah, I really. Yeah, am. once the PTU goes live, we'll probably see it after after the PTU goes live. Yeah, I would imagine. Uh, so yeah, it, it'll be a while, and, and I get what people you know with the three that they were you know three choices that they were given. I understand why people go. Oh well, let's see what you know. What they can come with with RSI, since we already have an Argo, and since we already have a yeah, we already do uh, have a Misk, yeah. and we already do have an Argo mining ship, so that's probably where it came from. Um, and it's okay, you know. Um, yes, absolutely, it's a mining anytime, ship. Anytime, anytime we get a new mining ship, man, I don't, we don't care. Um, One thing I will say, and I think you're you probably are in the same wheelhouse with this. I think we chatted about it. Is they talked about this mining ship also carrying. An ROC, and yeah. here's what's we. I mean, here there are occasions where, and I mean, I'm trying so hard because I really, you know, I, you guys all know out there how much I love Star Citizen. Please, do not get. You know, but I fly a mole. I'm I'm a mole. Like when we do our mining nights, and we do, you know, and whenever you know, and lately they've been a little quieter, no question about it. But you know, in the past when we've had these 10, 15, 20 man mining nights, my job in those you know most of the time is being a mole captain, uh, kind of handling the scooping team. Um, and so I you know know how the mole flies. It's you know it's it's a boss. I mean it's a big hunk of industrial it's like a giant it's like strapping engines to a refrigerator yeah you know and it's, it's, a, it's, it's not aerodynamic it's not you know it's it's a huge industrial ship and so you know the few times now now and then you know you have to land the mole on the planet surface and you know i mean look you can do it and and in many cases it's fine but there's not a lot of even ground right it's not the mole is a, the size, the type of the size of ship where it can be, you know, it may take you an extra minute or two to find a place to set down and, you know, and and lower the, uh, you know, lower the uh, hangar, uh, you know, so or you know, or the elevator so people can come up. Mm -hmm. So you know, if if you're making a ship, I mean, arguably somewhere that's larger than a mole, you know, but smaller than an Orion. But you know, I would imagine, okay, if it's going to be a lot, if it's going 
you so you have it's going to be much larger than a mole you, you're it's going to be much larger than a mole it's going to be an atmosphere and it's going to have to like it's going to like land and drop off an roc i mean are you going to be trying to are you actually scanning gems with that great big honking chip <laughs> you know because um currently if you have to scan gems i mean if you're not nose down on them <laughs> And, you know, Star Streams, I know you know what I'm talking about if you happen to listen to this or any of you people who ROC mine, because I was ROC mine in tonight, by the way. If you don't nose down on those gems, I mean, you can't tell what they are. So, <laughs> you know, um, and, and I know we're, you know, it's different between how the game will be and how it is, but the, I just, I'm having a hard time envisioning an enormous ship landing on a regular basis to drop off an ROC. Um, you know, I don't, like, like, or having, I mean, you've already got a ship that the size of the mold that doesn't fly well in atmosphere. You know, is, is this, is this RSI ship going to do better in atmosphere than the mole? And how much bigger, I mean, we know it's going to be bigger than the mole. So how much bigger is it going to be than the mole? Um, you know, that, that was one of the things that, um, you know, that we talked about. The big deal was that, yes, we're very happy that we're getting a new ship. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, the very fact that John Crew was like, well, yeah, and you can also put like your ROC in it. And you're like, why? Why? I mean, if you're using it as a mining vessel, what is the point of having an ROC inside of it? It's not like you're going to, I mean, you could, I mean, drop somebody off and, you know, let them go to town. But, um, yeah, I, you know, it, it just seemed like a feature that was, or a misplaced feature. That that's what it seemed like to me. A well, it's just feature. like yeah. I mean, the Odyssey is such a big ship. You know, it's it's like, is it going to be easy to put that thing on the ground and offload ground vehicles? You know, I mean, it's just it's an interesting thing. You know, it's just we'll have to see. I mean, I'm excited that there's a new mining ship. Um, I I hope that they have some kind of uh. Maybe some kind of a levitation system or a tractor beam system for lowering, for putting those vehicles on the ground. Well, you know, you know, is it going to be, you know, a, sp a specific mining craft or is it going to be a, a mining craft adjacent type thing where it's like, oh, well, you know, we can load up all this stuff in it or whatever. And, you know, if it's anything... You know, it being bigger than the mole, if it's anything like that, um, how many times are you going to drop people off with the ROC? Or how many times are you going to take something that, <clears throat> if you've dealt with anything bigger than a, if it's an industrial style ship, anything bigger than a mole, then you know it's a pain in the ass to get off the atmosphere, you know, to get off the ground into atmosphere. Um, you know, one of the things that that you know we used to do was we'd have training nights and we'd take something big like the reclaimer. Yep. And everybody had to pass these tests on flying the reclaimer, flying and landing the reclaimer, and then taking off again, and you know, and that big honking thing. So, could you imagine? You know, something smaller than a reclaimer but bigger than a mole and they go, you know, and just basically, uh, just casually go, Hey, let's land, you know, let's land. And we're going to take, we're going to take this ship to go ROC mining over something like, you know, like a constellation or a, uh, like a cutty or, you know, something that you can get in and out really quick. Or even, you know, at the very no least, man. if you wanted to load up, you know, 15 ROCs in a C2, hell, that thing flies awesome in Atmo and well, lands awesome. You're making an excellent point. And yeah. here's, the, here's another, you know, really good one, right? And, and, and one of the things I will preface this with, with is we don't know what's... I mean, Pyro may have, you know, maybe Pyro's got some hand mine or some ROC mineables that are worth quite a bit of money. The, or you know or that type of thing or you know that there's there's a reason to do it or whatever but if you have a large mining vessel it's important to understand like when i went roc mining tonight 
you know, I took I, I used a Cutlass Red as my as my ROC hauler. Um, I landed. Uh, I think I think I found two Hadonite nodes. It took me about a forty five minutes to an hour. Um, two different clusters that had about five each in them. I think. Well, actually, I think one of them had five in it. One of them had six in it, or or seven. You know. So uh, and I and I did both of those. Um, you know those clusters, uh, and I made about a hundred and two thousand. So if you have a large mining ship, if you're stopping to ROC mine, at least in the current verse, you're kind of leaving some money on the table because 100,000 is, that's only 12 SCU of Quantanium. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you're not, it's like, um, you know, it would be like having a, you know, a really unbelievable combat ship uh, you know, like, a, like the one that's easily capable of clearing the the like the hardest bounties, and but always just doing mediums. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> and look, yeah, and it's probably because you know I'm just kind of in a in one of those moods tonight, kind of in a um, you know, but you know, look, let me just say, I think it's great. That we're getting a new yep. mining ship. Absolutely. And I think it's great that it has a bay big enough to put an ROC in. I, you know, that's cool. You know, we, we haven't had you know, we haven't had a mining vessel that was able to, you know, carry something else. So, you know, as it relates to that, you know, I, I think we started in on this thing. It was a positive thing, and then we're like, we don't understand why, you know. Um and and maybe it's you know, maybe it's that the idea was like, hey, you know, it has a bay big enough to put something in. And, you know, it's like you could even bring your OC with you. And the first thing we're like, why would you? <laughs> but, you know, we're, you know, we're not looking, you know, as it as one of those things where it uh, has more versatility than we're giving it credit for, I guess. So. Well, and listen, I mean, all this stuff remains to be seen, right? I mean, you know, I, anyway, bring on the mining ship. You know, I'll probably I'll probably love it either, any way, shape, or form, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it may fly like a Connie. Who knows? Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I just wanted to backtrack, you know, some of... You know, some of my uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't know why the hell they would put an you know, ROC in the thing. And, you know, honestly, doesn't matter. It, the fact that it's able to, you know, that it actually has a bay and that you can put, you know, an, another vehicle inside of it. Cool, man. Hell, maybe you'd want to land and just kind of like head out on foot and or head out on, you know, in a vehicle and just kind of... Well, and the Odyssey has that, right? I mean, the Odyssey running. lands and, you you, you know, there, it can it definitely can unload ground vehicles. You know yeah, what I mean? So, so you know, yeah, I, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go down that and just say, hey, blah, 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 this sucks. Well, I didn't the, want, the, the whole, I didn't want it to sound like that. Yeah, well, the whole... I didn't... Yeah, and I the whole point I was trying to make is, you know, like, right now, at least currently, you know, I'm not... You know, I mean, unless you just want to go out of your way to go ROC mining, you know, you you definitely, you definitely will, you, you know, it seems weird to have a ship that's larger than a mole that's so capable of just scooping up a massive amount of, you know, like normal um, mineables that you would actually then land and just go after the little guys. But, you know, like I said, I'm not, not you know, at this point moving on, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For our new mining ship, so that, that's yeah. That's kudos for the new mining ship, exactly. Let's you know. So they showed the Corsair too. By the way, I just I didn't want I did want you know shout out to the Corsair. It looked good. Um, Izella and I have always been a little surprised that just like it's not as long. You know, in my mind it was always so much longer. But it's you know it's cool looking ship. I think a, a lot of fo fo uh, forward uh, firepower. I really like the idea that the turrets do. They're not kind of those. Um, you know, kind of broadsides or whatever. You know that they actually do have functionality to turn. Uh, shout yeah, out, they, probably the info runners. I know they leaned on that hard all the time that they didn't like that. So yeah. Yeah, they they had uh, a lot more articulation than you know. It's good that they went back and revisited that. 
and perfect yeah, example of the community oh, saying like yeah. at yeah. first it was you know it had very limited you know mobility so uh but now you know it has like you know fully 180 degrees in every direction or you know forward and you know rear facing so that's cool so, yeah it is cool so now we come to it you know the last couple of things that i think we wanted to talk about tonight um and uh, and it's the last couple of panels that really kind of um that really kind of had um my head scratching a little bit and and it's uh you know the first one we're going to talk about is the need for for multiple speeds um you know my if, i i want to say this before i get started here um all we want for anybody to do is educate yourself and if for some reason it's okay it's okay to look at the current project and be like i i don't like the direction that this is headed there's nothing wrong with being like clinically saying you know i really i love this i love this i love this i'm not so sure about this and it's okay for you to go to spectrum and for you to if as long as you're not just going on there and just ranting and just being silly it's okay to go write down what your honest to goodness thoughts are collectively. voice your opinion no that don't have that yeah voice your opinion don't don't think you're going to get a, a good a healthy response back don't you know, keep your expectations and check what other people are going to say or do but absolutely please go voice your opinion cuz i know Zell and i certainly you know as you as you as you as you as you've listened to this no um I'm going to tell you at first blush, I did not like the need for speed master mode concept at all. I will tell you, I like it less now than when they first started talking about it with some of the clarifications that have come out. And uh, there's a, you know, I have a couple of reasons for it, which I'll, which I'll get into. Um, but I, um, you know, this particular one uh this is where they they're talking about how like squadron 42 is helping things bake in the oven and it's supposed to come into the pu like more fleshed out or more baked this is one that i wish that you know we would have gotten a tip you know i wish we would have known about this one a long time ago <laughs> that they were that they were that they were doing this kind of stuff because to me these master modes they're not choice I don't believe that there is, there's as much choice in here as they're trying to, you know, that's collectively they're trying to say, hey, we're giving you the choice to, to go into these different modes. I don't think that that's, I don't think it's based on choice. I think that they want a very particular thing to happen in combat and they're, they're kind of forcing it into it with this particular, with these, with these uh, master modes. Well, I'm just going to go out and, you know, just completely come out front and say i think they're you know taking a lot of choice away from you is what i feel right that's um you know when we spoke the other day <clears throat> i mean you you had your you know you had your dandered up man i mean you had your your cackles and stuff were out i was not uh, happy and you know and, and this is me you know in my arrogance is that you know, just like we were talking about before, you know, I, I already had an idea. This is kind of basically the direction that they were going to go. And I was going on the assumption that, you know, you're going to switch to this, to this mode and, um, you know, your guns go live and things like that. The, you know, SCM and the Q, you know, QCM. So you go into the SCM mode, and um, which is your combat mode, and um, you know that's how you're gonna kind of stay locked into that combat speed at first blush, and because I wasn't paying that much attention to it because I had a like a pre assumption of what it was. Um, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And then, you know, you and I were talking, you're like, no, man, you know, and I was like, oh, man, you know, we'll just wait and see and kind of things like that. 
And then I went and kind of, you know, went into kind of the deep dive and some clarification that they had on Spectrum and kind of got a better understanding of what it was. And, you know, I was like, uh, yeah, man, let me uh, let me go help you find that pitchfork again, because, (laughs) (laughs) because, uh, you know, I'm feeling the same way. Uh, Yes, I feel like they're taking choice away from you more than anything. Now, to let people know, now, I thought it was one of these situations and this is the way it should be. Where, you know, if you want to initiate combat and you want to, you know, you, you want to, you know, get into a dogfight with somebody that, you know, you, you know, swap yourself to that, you know, SCM mode or what I like to call it combat mode. And, you know, guns go live. You're good to go. Everything's cool. But if you want to, you know, disengage from combat, uh, I feel like. You know, you just, you know, swap out of your mode and then, you know, take off and go on about your day. And we were under, you know, I was under the assumption that, hey, every, you know, uh, every other facet of, of flight was going to be the way it is now. The only thing changes is when you want to, you know, turn your guns on. You swap into that mode, turn your guns on, and then you're locked into that, you know, 300, 400 meters a second, um, you know, flight speed. And, you know, if you didn't want to be in that, then, you know, it's business as usual. That's how it should be. But that's not how it is. I mean, for you to have shields on uh, just in normal day to day, you have to be locked into that that SC or that uh, SCM mode all the time. And how the hell is that going to work out? You know, uh, we we were talking about, you know, just kind of give you a little, uh, heck we, you know, we fly on the surface of Lyria at more than 300 meters a second, just looking for quantane, scanning for quantanium. You know, do, do I feel like I want to be, do I feel like I want to be locked into this mode all the damn time? No, man. You know, let let me have more choice. Let me let me go about my day like I normally went. You know, the the only people that are benefiting from this is, are people that are in a PVP. And um you know, everybody else has you know, it, it's it's another one of those situations and I and I, I'm not going to get negative about this, but it, it's it, it's like always. It, it's it's the balancing of PvP that ruins the PvE for, you know, MMOs. Uh, it, it, it's been that way in time immemorial. Well, and, yes, I don't disagree with that. And, you know, I just don't feel like this is the way to go. If you want to keep people locked in your combat speed, let them get in, you know, let them go into that SCM mode and... Let that be that, man. Let them just go, go back and it. come on, just boot up 1991 Secret Weapons of the Luftwaffe and just play that. I mean, yeah, what, I what mean, the heck, man? I mean, I don't understand. I just want to say this, right? And this is about as raw as I'm ever going to get on on our podcast. I am not sure what why there's some thought that the Messerschmitt versus Spitfire, you know, like that particular era of air to air combat translates into what you want for 2952 in space combat. I just don't get, you know, that entire concept of making a World War II fighter mode. And listen, I loved World War II fighter mode in in Chris's old games. Absolutely adored it. And I adored it in uh, in Secret Weapons of the Luftwaffe. And it didn't bother me that much in X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. But I'm also okay for it not to be that in Star Citizen. Um, and I I don't, you know, like, like to your point, Sal, I don't want to fly around in Star Citizen with no shields on. Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. You know, it's just like, 
I mean, I, I suppose I can get used to it, but to me, you know, as somebody who mainly flies an industrial ship, I'm either in no shield mode or combat mode. And either one of those two are death. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. And it seems to be the... Listen, I, I want to say this also. It would definitely make sense to me. This is the point I want to really make is how Squadron 42 is supposed to be serving the PU now. That's the big thing that, that uh, Richard Fowler and Chris Roberts were talking about. Like how Squadron 42 is... You know, like things are going to come into the persistent universe more fleshed out. And that very well could be the case. It remains to be seen. And I'm not, you know, but here's the thing. I don't think a single player, like it makes sense if you want to have master modes to me in Squadron 42 in a single player PVE game. If you want to slow down the combat and have there be master modes in a single player PVE game, whatever. I mean... <laughs> I, I I don't mind what I, that, I'm fine with that. I, everybody, you know, but in the persistent universe in the sandbox world, I don't understand why you just couldn't use power management to just basically simulate relatively the same thing. You know, uh, you know, just just have you know prioritize your the triangle the you know the weapons you know the weapons and the shields and the. Uh, you know, and and the engines. You know, you know, you you could have done something, you know, completely and utterly different with it along those lines. But it just seems like they're hell bent on having World War II air to air combat as Squadron Forty Two's combat and to, to and Star Citizens combat, and they're willing to just whatever, you know, take all of the freedom. Because that's what I feel when I fly, fly in Star Citizen right now, Freedom. And and that, to me, telling me, we're going to lock you into this thing or lock you into that thing, and that's going to give you a choice. No, you're actually taking my choice away. Well, yeah, like I said, you know, I believe, you know, kind of going back, like I said, if they're, if they're bent on the idea of, of locking people into this combat speed. Okay, fine. I, I, like I said, I already had an idea that's what what they were going to do. And I think that, you know, we it could be a win-win a type thing if um, they'd ease up on the idea of what they're wanting to do. It's like, you're either this or that. That That's, that's not a thing. It's just like, why don't you just make it to where if you want to, you know, uh, initiate combat, then you swap to that, you know, swap into that SCM mode, and uh, yeah, fine. What and, if I want know, to initiate I, getting I, away? Can I have? Why can't I have yeah, get away yeah, mode? You know, if I, if I <laughs> yeah. you know, and if I don't want to participate in combat, then I just boost away. See you, you know. See you later, Tater. I'm out. And I, you know, I feel like you both things can be true at the same time. I I feel like. I feel like if they want to have this mode, cool, groovy. I'm, I'm down with it. But you know, let you know, let it stay the way it is right now. It, it, it's a simple thing. There's no reason to you know to complicate it and you know add all this stuff to it when it could just be as simple as all right. When I switch to combat mode, my guns go live and I'm, I'm good to go. And if I don't want to do that, then, you know, you know, it's like any other day, the way it is right now, where, you know, I can fly around with my shields, you know, for somebody that, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, can get uh, a little ahead of themselves and, and come into a station a little too hot, <laughs> I want my shields to be there. Um, you know, I don't want to be down fifty percent or what, well, whatever the just, case may be. I accidentally, you know, bumped bumped a stick and I, you know, you know, ran into somebody. You know, my and I don't have my shields up. Yeah, I mean, we do that all the time, and we we do a lot of close quarters flying, and um, yeah, exactly. It, it just, you you know, I, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna get off my soapbox, but you know, I feel like. I feel like you could both make both sides happy if if you eased up on a lot of this stuff and, and said, okay, cool. And just, you know, 
without the added complications of everything else of going, you know, SCM to QCM and, uh, you know, your, your ships, your shields collapse in QCM away from, you know, what about just normal flying around and, you know, just like we do now, you know, I guess that's the thing is why overcomplicate it? If you want to, if you want to swap to that combat mode and restrict the speeds, fine. You know, reading on the spectrum, you know, a lot of, a lot of the racers, man, are not happy about that. And, and I, I get it. I really get it. You know, it's, uh, like I said, with, you know, the stuff that I saw at first glance, at first blush, I wasn't paying that too much attention to it. I was kind of looking, looking into it. I, you know, had a lot of, you know, a lot of things going on that day and really didn't pay attention to it all that well. And like I said, went under, you know, my pre-assumption of what it was and was like, oh yeah, this will be fine. No big deal. And, and then when I started digging into it and we're getting the clarifications and, you know, I was reading on Spectrum and yeah, it you know, that, you know, started sounding crap to me. <laughs> it was, it, yeah, it, it, like you said, man, it, it, it's taking away choice and not giving choice. So. Yeah. Now, the, the last thing I want to preface this all with was we don't know what the end product's going to be. Nope. We don't know. And, you like know, said, this is just, we're just going on the information they provided and the clarifications they provided. And it's just, you know, it, it that that much we absolutely you know it's just um you know it's okay like i've i've had to give myself permission a couple times to be you know like i you know i put a lot of hours in star citizen i love star citizen i play it all the i you know it's really i mean you know it's probably to a little bit to Zell's chagrin in some capacity. It's really all, mostly all I ever play, you know? I mean, I honestly, you know, I, I like dipped into New World a little bit. I looked, you know, I I keep an eye on um, some, some you know, some titles here and there. I mean, uh, you know, but for the most part, I just, I, I'm super passionate about Star Citizen. I mean, you know, I wouldn't make content for Star Citizen if I didn't think it was such a, an important, you know, it's, it's a great, it game you know and so uh you know uh, when when i see them kind of you know trying you know here's the last thing i want to say they said with them with the need for speed they tried tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of other things um and they seem to have settled on this thing well, I would say that you st there's still some room for improvement. You know what I mean? This, well, keep 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 working at it. You might be closer, yeah. You know than than you were, but keep working on it. CIG, don't don't just kind of don't lock don't lock us into mo these. Mo you know, figure out a way to kind of just the freedom that we have when we fly around right now needs to remain. It, you know. I, you know, if some people are just going to joust at high speed, who cares? Honestly, is it is it that big of a deal that somebody's going to boom and zoom at you know at eleven hundred or whatever? What the heck? Let it go. You know, if some if people want to slow down and dogfight, let them. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it's at at, at the end of the day, it's how it works itself out if it's fun fine uh this is our knee-jerk reaction to the situation <laughs> yeah. that we know at this present time yes um uh, and yep look like you know like i said we we've always been fairly happy go lucky and we hit that moment you know uh, you hit that moment especially when you're passionate about something where you get salty when you hear something and it at, you know at first blush you're like oh that sounds like crap yeah well it's counterintuitive to how, what your vision is right i mean that's what it is you know yeah and absolutely I, we're we're gonna but also let me say this let your voice be known yeah if you feel like you know this is one of those situations where you know be respectful in the forms uh try to be as articulate as possible about what you're trying to convey yep and 
just let them know. It's like, hey, I think this is a decent idea, but I believe, you know, in my interpretation or, you know, the way I see it, I feel like, you know, this may not be the way to go. Just, you know, just let people know that, you know, think about it. You know, we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll percolate on this a little bit more and yep. we'll see, you know, we'll see how it goes. And, and yeah, man, we're a little salty tonight. Um, you know, V was pretty salty yesterday and I was, <laughs> you know, I was trying to go, Hey man, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. And, and then shit, man, as soon as I, <laughs> well, like I said earlier, we try to get into it. I go, Oh, I see why you're salty. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. But, well, and we, and we just, we do so well normally talking each other off the ledge, but you know, it's just, there was, I think the hits just kept coming, you know, uh, with this. And it, it was one of those things. <laughs> I started, you know, when we were talking about this earlier in the week, I started this whole situation out as in, yeah, you know, I'm fairly positive of what, you know, we saw during this, you know, during CitizenCon presentations. Yeah, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm fairly cool with a lot of this stuff. And, um, but, you know, it can be one little thing, man. That, you know, that, that one little wrench. That gets thrown into you know thrown into the cogs man and it just kind of ruins your whole day and you're like shit and you can get so salty that it makes all the other things look negative you're like oh yeah man this blows and uh, yeah <laughs> it goes, it goes through those moments man you you gotta you, you know you gotta go through those stages of you know kicking rocks and you know saying f this stuff <laughs> and you know and then finally you'll come to a place and kind of see it for what it is and yeah and man this will be a long time before stuff like this gets implemented well, all this stuff is a long ways out yeah that's the yeah, one thing's for sure look man they'll refine it it'll be different I'm, I'm sure you know there's a lot of people that are expressing their views on this situation and they'll uh i'm, I'm sure they'll revisit it and and um it, like i like i was saying yesterday man before i got i really got into it is you know i believe that they'll rework this shield situation and i still feel like that because I, I don't see it being a positive any other way and there's too many you know they're looking through the lens of squadron 42. this is going to be a lot different in the pu the, the this whole idea when you you know, when this gets to testing, they'll they'll tweak some stuff. Guaranteed. Look, a single Guaranteed. player PVE game is not <laughs> is not a is it's just it's a different it's different. You know, yeah. like I, it, you know, it, slow slow it down all you want. I don't care what you do with Squadron Forty Two, but yeah. don't just don't have. It's not a one. It, you know, the one hundred percent. What's good for Squadron Forty Two as a single player PVE game? Should have nothing to do with what's going on. <laughs> in the, yeah, in, in, in yeah. many capacities. I mean, you know, like sure. I mean, they, they you could share lots and lots and lots of the tech, but as far as the flight model goes, you, when there, when there's you know lots and lots of people involved, and uh, and that type of thing. Eh, I don't. You, I, but I want to stay on this in the sense of in the mode of, uh, you know. There's a lot of time. It's going to be an iterative process, and we very well could wind up, could wind up on something that you and I both think is a great system. So you know, like, yeah. you know, my gut feeling is this will be. They'll reiterate this, and it, it'll be different. Yeah, it, it's. I, I feel like you know, one of the things that we've noticed with Star Citizen, they they don't seem to be like. Uh, the devs don't seem to be, you know, this is how we feel like we're going to do it in my way or the highway type of situation. Right. I, I feel like, um, you know, after, you know, as, as it gets closer to them adding it to the PU, I, I believe it'll go through some uh, different iterations and I feel like we'll find a a common ground ch in, in this ch you know, changes in this, exactly yeah, changes, because you know this being implemented is way down the road i guarantee you know I oh yeah it, that's the it, it, i you know and so 
Um, kind of. Let's round the corner on on that, and let's just kind of talk about this. The last one was the two hour discussion with Richard Towler and Chris Roberts, um, and, and and really, it just it, it what you just said Zell, is a perfect segue. It's the only reason I'm kind of uh, is is kind of jumping on and riffing on it. All of, that's the one takeaway. Like I watched that, you know, listen to the two hour thing. I should should, should not say watch. I should say listen because I was driving in the car. Um, you know, and then I did go back and look at the things where they show things, you know, and, and it's the things that they're showing are cool. One of the things that really, I think I was really taken aback by after really listening very closely to Chris and Richard is that St uh, Squadron 42 is not as close as I thought it was. Like I, and I, and I'm not sure, I'm not saying I thought it was super close, but it's not as close as I thought thought it was you know what i mean i'm not saying that i thought it was tomorrow or the next day so you're absolutely right when you say like all of this stuff pyro's further away than we thought certainly these design investigations are further away than we thought those underground bunkers are who knows when those could happen they were just basically concept art you know um whether or not you know these master modes the like lorville 2 uh and it's certainly the resource management system I mean, out the only thing that's tangible that was in this are, are the actual shit is the Corsair, um, you know, and then there's there's two, a couple of concept ships, right? You got the, the you know, a, an announced concept ship, and then the the ship challenge, which was ended up being you know the, the new mining vessel. A lot of this stuff is a long ways out, and so when I watch this two hour panel or listen to this two hour panel between Chris and Richard Towler. I, I was very surprised. I don't know what I thought, you know, because I have had my ear to the track pretty good. It's a little further out than I thought it was, for sure. And um, it was real eye-opener in that capacity. Well, you know, we talked a little bit about it last week. And um, with what Aaron Roberts said, that, you know, it'll be 2024. Um and we kind of, you know, was working the timeline out and, and yeah, I mean, if it is, it, you know, it's something that we talked a little bit of, you know, can they wrap uh, all this up? And maybe Chris Roberts was discussing it, you know, from a point of low expectation where, you know, people weren't like, oh, well, and <laughs> You know, I don't know the bigotry of soft expectations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, can they get the? You know, I don't know. That was one of the things I, I didn't get to listen to it. You know, I, that, I got busy and, and and didn't get to listen to it, so I'll have to go back and revisit that. But you know, can they finish the game? You know, if their idea and Aaron Roberts sure you know i'm sure that's you know could be a thing so Get it done in two two years it's like you know finish it up the you know the all the stuff that they have to finish up through 2023 uh, i mean that's a whole year if they're you know if they're cranking on it and then you know then you got 2024 where they have you know that whole year to you know, do their marketing, you know, get out in front of the media um, and, you know, do their polish and, and finish and have it out by, you know, Q4 of 2024. I feel, I mean, I, I feel like that's doable. Um, it just is, you know, what state well, it's exactly right. here's right now. So here's what I think. I just want to kind of just sum it all up neatly, right? Here's what I think happened to me with the Citizen Con is, and and, and I think I've watched other people because I've definitely sat on the side of the fence where I'm just like, why are people so cynical or why are people so upset, right? But this is the first time that I've sat back and honestly considered. What length of time, if I if I'm just honest with myself and I look into the future, and I see there's five or six different systems, we actually have multi-crew gameplay. 
there's, you know, there's all these different kinds of missions to do, all those different kinds of reputation. There's trading going on. There's mining going on. There's salvaging going on. There's bounty hunting going on. And there's actual tracking people down and putting them in cryo freeze and hauling them back. There's the, like the star citizen that we all love and want and dream about. To me, like, and I'm just talking about having a handful of systems, half dozen systems, six systems, and the multiplay and all the power and all the power resource systems and a, and a good star map and and good uh, Moby Glass stuff and, and 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 all the ships tractor beams working and all the different tech that they've shown, uh, FPS scanners and and all that stuff. I honestly am thinking it's a, you know, it's not, and this is just to have the six systems. It's five years from now. I don't. I don't see how it's a shorter time period than that, unless they, unless there's an enormous ramp up, which there's a large ramp up going on. But in my mind, it's like I. What I thought was maybe a year or two out is maybe, maybe that's where my disappointment lies. Is that I think it's actually more three to five years. Well, yeah, I, I you know. I knew that we were quite a little ways still, uh, but I thought, you know, I guess one of the things that um, I thought we were going to gain a lot of traction this next year, and we still may do, you know. Mm -hmm. um, You know, if they keep, you know, releasing features and keep everything moving in a, you know, in a fairly decent timeline and direction, you know, everything will be cool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is, uh, there was a lot of things that, uh, you know, we saw that we're kind of negative, and we saw a lot of positive. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of going to wrap it up with this: is that honestly, I was, you know, pretty salty when we started tonight, and you know, I'm sure with a lot of people that we got to we got to talk it out you know, with a couple hundred of our closest friends. And I feel a little bit better than I did when we started tonight. Um, I feel like everything's going to be cool. It'll, you know, just keep moving forward. Keep, you know, keep getting these releases out. Um, I know it's easy to get cynical, uh, especially when you know, you see a lot of things that uh, you feel like needs to be, or at least what we consider to be a little bit further along than, you know, than where they're at right now. But I believe, um, you know, they've, they've got a pretty good crew. You know, they're going to be hiring, you know, about 200 more people, you know, into next year. Um I believe once they start getting a lot of this wrapped up with uh, Squadron 42, so we got another, you know, at least another year of um, of them kind of uh, piecemealing things for, you know, the persistent universe. But I believe, um, you know, I believe things will start, you know, I still feel like things will start being released a little bit more quickly than they have been uh i think once they sort out this these last couple of patches 318 319 um and get into next year i think i think we'll start seeing i think we'll start having a more positive spin uh on the situation you know i don't you know now that i've kind of you know, felt like I voiced my opinion uh, and kind of hashed some stuff, you know, some stuff out in my mind. I feel a little bit better about it. And, you know, 
being able to talk it out with a couple of hundred of your closest friends <laughs> that makes, you, makes you feel a little bit better. So, Heck yeah. What about you? Man? How are you feeling now? I know that it's kind of a some of the stuff was, uh, you know, a little disappointment. Very, you know, very disappointing. Uh, some of it may have been a little disillusional. I just uh, uh, yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, the re there's just um, you know there was a little bit of um, it's kind of like getting hit, hit in the in the face of a glass of cold water. You know, it's like ooh, um, so definitely woke up to a couple of things that I just wasn't sure. I you know we're gonna have to see how how they pan out, right? We're gonna have to just kind of be happy warriors voice our opinions uh in in a in a good way try and be positive as much as we possibly can um yes, be constructive be you know constructive, be constructive yeah. with criticisms because um, and, and and you know hey uh you know this is just you know it's a day you know what i mean it's a, it's a day um and i do think it's okay now and then to kind of you know I'm sure we're not the only ones in all the content creators and all the developers and all the people. Everybody has their moments where they're just like, wow, this is a, you know, that the, the summit up there is a long ways to, to hike, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and so, and so, yeah, I mean, I, this is just one of those moments where I think we, we kind of, you know, w where we looked at kind of what they were saying and just kind of the, the landscape between here and there. And, um, and definitely, you know, it definitely, there's a lot of questions in it, but you'll, you, you know, us, I mean, we'll, we definitely will always obviously, uh, take really constructive looks at what's happening and try and always be, um, usually as positive as possible, but try and be as honest and as, um, as, as, um, you know, is considerate as we possibly can to see kind of both the, to the, see all sides of it, um, and uh, and and definitely empathize with with the, with the positions we don't necessarily always, you know, feel like are our own. So, with that being said, you know, uh, it was um, not you know not your typical love fest for you know that we normally do for the game, but I don't necessarily think it was uh, a bridge too far. Well. Look, I'm glad we got it off our chest. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think everything will be cool in the long run. We'll just, uh, you know, doesn't mean that we can't stay vigilant. Like I said, as long as, you know, you're constructive with your criticisms, mm -hmm. uh, this game is being developed and you have to let the devs know, hey, man, I don't know if this is the right direction for the game in the long run. You know, I, you know, there's some things that I like, and there's some things that I don't like. And I, I just, you know, I just feel like uh, in, in situations like that, just be, you know, just be a critical thinker and, you know, um, be constructive with your criticism uh, and be respectful. You know, there's no, no sense of flaming. You know, if you start out with bleep, 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 then, you know, people just pass it on by, man. You know, people don't even look at that. So, yeah, just, you know, think about what you want to say and and uh, say it firm, but in the nice way, po the nicest way possible. That, and, uh, yeah, just let your voice be known. So, you sure you're not feeling any better about it? <laughs> I don't feel bad about it for the love of heaven, you know. Um, I mean, you know, hey, uh, I am very, very, very um, happy that there's uh, that there's lots more stuff coming. Uh, I, I'm, you know, let's let's just. I mean, I know, you know, I know that it took a little while for them to get persistent entity streaming into the Evocati. Let's celebrate that it's in Evocati. You know, let, you mean you know, it's not like progress isn't being made. Progress is being made. You know what I mean? So, so definitely celebrate the progress that's being made. You know, and I and I yeah. So, you know, just think about it. <laughs> this time in uh, this time in November, you know, we'll be seeing three eighteen. <laughs> I and, uh, you know we'll be out there salvaging, man. Uh, yeah. Some of these concept ships and things that, uh, 
that are going on sale. We, you know, may see some really cool sales, you know, for IAE and yeah, man, they're, you know, we'll just, we'll just keep doing what we do, baby. We'll just keep doing what we do. So, um, I know it's going to be a little bit shorter one, man. Rolling. So. <laughs> Not that much shorter though. It's still a buck 40. So, um, anyways, everybody out there, I hope that you're having a lovely week. A uh, lovely month. Uh, I tell you what, IAE is not terribly far down the road from now. Uh, and we are, you know, I'm sure we're going to get some kind of some sneaky fun stuff that's going to come out with that in the near future. Um, and I am really like, you know, tangibly looking forward to some hall stripping. <laughs> so, uh, Literally. Uh, next, so, week's episode, yeah. next week's episode we're probably going to be talking about wow a little bit more no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> dragon flight right? no, man. everything's gravy baby and uh, you know yeah a lot of cool things coming up in the next uh, next month or so so looking forward to it say goodnight V well, good night, everybody. Take care of yourself, and we'll see you around the verse. <laughs> you guys, make sure that, you know, anything that we've talked about tonight, let us know down below, man. If uh, if there's something that we're missing in the idea of this, uh, you know, the SCM and the Q QCM situation, um, you know, and lightness, you know, if, if there's something that, that, that we're missing about the whole situation, then. Let us know down in the comments below. Um, also, the big thing, make sure that you tell us what your brand of mining ship would you guys have liked. Ooh, you know, were, were, were cool. you were you on the Argo boat? Or, were, you know, were you in the, you know, said, hey, man, maybe we need, you know, maybe we need something new. So you chose the, R, you know, the RSI. Or, uh, you know, Maybe you're kind of like V and myself and was like, whew, you know, we sure could use another MISC mining ship. <laughs> <laughs> Always. But, uh, hey, man, I think it's going to be a win-win. I honestly believe at some point we're going to get to see those, the you know, those other iterations as well. I believe uh, at some point they'll make all three. So uh, fingers crossed. But with that being said, we'll see you next week on another Rock. Runner's report.